Welcome garden friends. Thanks for taking a little bit of time away from your garden to come see mine today. One of my favorite jobs. It starts right now and goes all the way until the ground freezes and it's planting bulbs. Got some really cool things to show you today. Uh, a little bit off the beaten path. You know, there's nothing wrong with planting the big four, the crocus, hyacinth, tulip, daffodil. I'm going to be planting lots of that, but I'm starting off with some things that are deer resistant and fun and different. And unfortunately, bulb planting has kind of gone out of favor. You don't get to see the results right away after doing your work. I use this ball bogger. It's from a company called Power Planter. It's three inches by seven inches and it's built to last. Uh, I love this tool. Now for me, I'm just going to be working as one person on my knees with my bulbs behind me. And this is perfect for me. I can, I'll drill my hole and in goes the bulb. But if you had a two person operation, you could go with a longer auger. They could drill the hole. Oh, I wish somebody would do that for me. You want to come do that for me? <laughs> and then put the bulb in. I'm going to be planting at least a thousand bulbs for in this season, probably more. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio and where my grandparents are buried, Lakeview Cemetery, they have this thing called Daffodil Hill. It started in the 1940s. When I went to visit my grandparents' graves when I was seven years old, I looked behind me and Daffodil Hill was in full bloom. And when I moved to this garden in 1998, I told my mother that I was going to plant a Daffodil Hill in memory of my grandparents. And that's what I've done out front. You know, every year I'm adding all these bulbs and I'm able to do it with this tool. You know that tool that you use like this by hand? It's cruel and unusual punishment for gardeners. It's really tough. You'll have 100 bulbs, get 10 in, what are you going to do with the other 90? So I'm going to show you how I do it and how much fun I have doing it. And I can't wait to see what this looks like in the spring. So follow me. So for years, I have partnered with flowerbulbs.com. They don't sell bulbs but they have the same mission I do, to get you to plant bulbs. And as I said, you know, I think it's gone out of favor because it's not instant gratification. But the gratification comes in the spring in, in such a wonderful way. And from every year afterwards, as I said, I just couldn't imagine having a garden without planting bulbs. And we're gonna start off with an, that's an allium that I showed you from the onion family. So the deer won't touch it. Four things that we are planting today are deer resistant and unique. Well, they're all unique, but the three of them are different. And then we have one, you know, just a normal, it's a crocus, but a cool type of crocus. That one, we have some special things to do and it relates to Bob X before we plant them. So there's nothing to this. We've got a nice bed here. With these big bulbs, it's harder than the smaller bulbs. And so that's why I wanted to show you some with the bigger bulbs and then the smaller ones because the smaller ones don't have to go as deep. And I talked about this power planter auger. You'll find cheaper ones online, but you'll have to buy three of them in, in the length of your garden time. This you'll be passing down to your grandkids. Any garden tool you buy, that's what you want, something that you can pass down to a generation or two. So root side down, everyone knows that. Just kind of place it in there, push it in, and just cover that over and let's keep it going. And boy, I can't wait. These will be blooming next May. And we, you know, we mostly know alliums as the big purple globes. These are gonna be big white globes, which is just, again, it's, it's unique, a little bit different. The right setting. There we go. Okay. And three more. Somebody asked me today, how do you remember where you plant the bulbs? Well, I take a picture a couple times a year. And still, though, you don't always know. <laughs> Especially you get to the end of the season and you're on the crazy mode like I gotta get stuff in the ground and you stop taking pictures and remembering and 
It's a nice surprise in the spring. All right, that's it. Let me show you some of the other smaller bulbs that are also deer resistant. That's all you gotta do. One of my other favorite bulbs, this is a Glory of the Snow, and this one's called Blue Giant. You plant 25 of these, you're gonna end up with a thousand eventually. The deer won't touch them, and they form that beautiful colony, and since they are small, little, like that, they only have to go that far down. It makes it so much easier for planting. Same thing we just did with the allium, it's just a, not quite as deep. Sometimes I'll throw two into the same hole because they just love to, to be close together. And we'll be done with these hundred in seriously 10 or 15 minutes. And the soil's pretty good. I've been working on this over the years. There's some compost in here. It's not great. Anytime that we plant bulbs, we want it to be a place where it's gonna dry out in the summer. That's what they love, it's just drying out. And we don't want something growing over them that we're going to have to be watering to keep alive because we'll be drowning the bulbs underneath. And who doesn't want blue in the garden? This is a pure white version of a plant called Pushkinia, another one that I just love. And these little bulbs are great in the front of the border, kind of rock garden plants. Pushkinia, again, the deer won't touch it. Uh, pure white, the other variety I grow, it has creamy white flowers and blue stripes. And again, it will form a colony. And it's just the same thing we just did little hole drop the bulb in and this thing is going to be here forever even down here in the rocks they're tough like me all right next i want to show you a great trick for crocus and tulips to keep them safe from critters as soon as i'm done here Whoops, just pulled out a daffodil bulb. <laughs> so many times, certainly in my garden, things like this beautiful tricolor crocus or tulips, the bulbs are attractive to rodents and they'll get in there and they'll chew them up. And this is a great little trick I learned from a gardening friend where you just put some of these bulbs in and you know our good old Smelly Bobex. <laughs> we just soak them in this Bobex for just a couple minutes and it will keep them safe for a season or two. There's no way to keep crocus in this landscape safe from the uh, chipmunks forever, but it does a good job definitely on the, the tulips. I don't have them going after the tulips, but once these flower and they have just the greens up, it, after two seasons and this bob eggs kind of wears off that kind of outs it for the chipmunks and they'll eat them up so all right you know how to plant these you've seen how to do it we don't have to show you that but that's how it's done i've heard from lots of gardeners whose tomato plants are filled with green tomatoes and we're at the point of the season now where most of what's being put on here will never reach fruition what a plant wants to do, it wants to grow, it wants to flower, and it wants to set seed, and that's what tomatoes are to this plant. It's a seed delivery system. And if we just hack off the tops, it puts this plant into a panic, and it will <laughs> start to change those tomatoes red because it wants to make seeds. And that's all there is to it. No sense in having them put on more flowers. Coming out of winter, this was one of the plants that took it on the chin. It's called Caria. I don't know if you remember, but we were cutting it all back and it has come back. And even 
even though it's a spring bloomer, it threw a few blooms here this summer, just one or two, which is what it normally does, but that shows me that hopefully next spring we're gonna be okay with this plant. One of my absolute favorites and underused shrubs in the landscape, Caria. Now it's time for Talking Trees from the Davy Tree Expert Company. I'm joined by Luke Warner. He's a district manager for the Davy Tree Expert Company, North Pittsburgh office. Thanks for coming back. Of course, now thanks for having me. Now your buddy Rob Crueljack has elbowed you out of the show this year. And he keeps telling me, don't call that guy, don't call that guy. Yeah. I said, no, he's got to be in here. He's got to, I'm so grateful <laughs> that you did this for me to save this shrub what do you think about the way it looks is it okay yeah yeah it's looking well you know it's uh when that type of damage happens and you get so much of the root system that, that might be broken it's hard to know exactly you know how that uh plant will recover from it what had happened was this just fell to the ground and i was mortified it's such a beautiful it has these beautiful white flowers and you told me it could be saved now how long do you think this should stay on here it's in a precarious position in that it growing that you know yeah although a rhododendron you know is shade tolerant and can live in the shade very well and thrive um, it is trying to get out to that sun so you know it, gravity is going against it here what's growing out so um, you know with the damage that happened to the roots it's likely that this uh, may always have to stay on here uh, support of some yeah you know way it might it make sense stay on. I've seen fancy gardens where they had support on rhododendrons so if it works for a fancy garden, it'll work in this garden. Yeah. What about water and fertilization for a plant like this at this stage in the season? Yeah, I mean, this stage of the season, fall is always a good time to, to fertilize. Um, a lot, oftentimes plants in the wood environment does, excuse me, don't require a lot of fertilization because we have a nice organic matter here. Um, the issue is a lot of its roots have been damaged. Uh, so it might not be getting as much nutrients as it's used to. Um, so, you know, supplementing with a, you know, just a balanced fertilizer can work really well in assuring that the plant has enough nutrients. My choice would be holly tone. Works great for rhododendrons. Would I just sprinkle it on here or do I drill down with my ball bogger? What's the best way to do it? Uh, oftentimes with the, uh, the holly tone, you can pull some of that debris away, spread it out over, put that debris back. Um, but any fertilizer you have is going to have you know, directions on the label. I appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. I want to show you one more thing. Sounds good. All right, come on. Okay, tree of heaven, weed tree, yeah. invasive, and... Spotted lanternfly. Yes. Another it's invasive. Favorite thing, right? It is, yeah. Uh, so this insect, you know, came from Asia. Um, but what you're seeing here is uh, the mature spotted lanternfly. Uh, they're unique in that they can have a lot of different shapes, sizes, and colors throughout their life. So they first start uh, early on in the year, black, white dots. Uh, as the year goes on, they'll change, become red uh, with, with uh, you know, those white dots. Not very good flyers. They don't have wings then. They'll hop around, but they ultimately turn into this uh, adult insect. I just We just saw one. I tried to stomp on him, even though he's a leaf hopper. He made it about 25 yards. Yeah. My theory, right or wrong, you tell me, leave my tree of heaven because they love the tree of heaven. And if I cut down my tree of heaven, they're going to come on my roses or something else. Yeah. Black walnuts, they can go on. They love uh, apples, peaches, grapes. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, plants that they do like. But yes, if you know you have a tree of heaven on your, on your property, not that you might you know, not that you want it there, but at least if you want to control them, you know, you can come to this plant every so often and take care of the ones that are there versus looking for them on all your other plants. I'm spraying them with horticulture oil, any one that I can get to, and that smothers them and seems to work pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not an overly difficult insect to control. Um, there's a lot of different options you can go, but ultimately controlling them and, and killing them is first and foremost. They are disgusting. They are. Great to see you. You too, Doug. For more information about everything we talked about today, go to DougOster.com and please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to hear what you thought of this season because this is our season finale. Until the next time we see each other, keep planting and we'll see you then.